welcome. My name is Ziad Zabin. I'm a sergeant with London Police Service. I work in our Diversity and Hate Crime Unit. Uh, it's a pleasure to be talking to you all today. And today we're going to be discussing our, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. As many of you are newcomers, I know this is very new. So we're going to go to a very just brief introduction. You may not know what a right is. So I'm going to just give you a quick definition of what is a right. All citizens living in Canada have guaranteed rights and freedoms. A right is a legal privilege or entitlement that is protected and due to all people. So everyone here has these rights, regardless of where they're from, how long they've been in Canada, they are here for everyone. Examples are your right to express yourself, your freedom of religion or beliefs. So as you're new to Canada, whatever your belief system is or your lifestyle, you have the right to, to live safe and happily however you choose. Rights and freedoms in Canada. The Canadian Bill of Rights was the first written expression of human rights laws. Our rights and freedoms are now protected at both the federal and provincial level by the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, a part of the Constitution Act of 1982 that was signed by Queen Elizabeth. As you'll see here, that is the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's available online. You can print it off. You can review it privately or talk about it with your family members. We're going to talk about the seven sections that define our rights as Canadians. The seven sections are your fundamental freedoms, democratic rights, mobility rights, legal rights, equality rights, official languages of Canada, and your minor minority language education rights. So we're still going to focus on the fundamental freedoms right now. So I already briefly talked about this, but what that means is the freedom of conscience and religion. Part of being in Canada is your right, and it's a protected right to believe in whatever faith or non-faith, whatever you choose to believe in or your, your expressions, and you have that freedom to express it. You can wear what you want to wear as part of your cultural, your faith-based uh, heritage, whatever you choose, that's your right. Freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression. Again, that's free to think. No one can tell you or suppress what you want to believe or want, what you want to uh, think. If you have ideas, you want to discuss them publicly, that is your right to have these open discussions. We do this many, many times in, our, in weekend town hall events where we discuss ideas of bringing people together, for example. Freedom of peaceful assembly. In Canada, it's a beautiful right to be able to demonstrate uh, peacefully or do a march for whatever it is that's important to you or your community. Usually something is happening in another part of the world, some uh, horrific crime or atrocity is happening, and here in Canada, you're, you have the right to demonstrate peacefully that this is wrong or you, you want the government to take action against whatever is happening uh, there. So everyone has that, that, uh, that freedom to demonstrate peacefully and it just has to be peacefully because we don't want any type of violence for any de demonstrations. Freedom of association. So free to belong, play act for own, any, any organization. So often uh, males and females, you can, you can take the role of any position for whatever organization, employer you want to work with. Everyone has that equal right uh, to belong. And mobility rights. This is another uh, factor people aren't aware of. The right to move freely in Canada. To exit, a lot of people like to go overseas and visit their homeland, if you will, or visit their relatives or families. You don't need any special uh, documentation to leave Canada. Once you, you arrive, your permits, your acquaintances, you can leave and go as you please to where and for whatever length you want. You will always be able to return whenever your, your vacation, your trip is done. And it's the same thing for provinces. We are in the province of Ontario. So if you want to go to Quebec or if you want to go to Alberta, there's no problems with crossing the province. All you need to fly, if you're going to fly, is a valid driver's license or health or some form of government ID, just get on the plane. That's it. Or if you drive, you can drive wherever you want. You don't have to worry about uh, any ID or anything like that. Of course, always have your driver's license with you your driving. Right? Um, okay, something that's very important I just want to touch on is the legal rights. 
You have four legal rights. The first one is life, liberty, and security of a person. So that is the right to maintain life and feel physically and emotionally safe. Everyone has the right to feel safe in the home, emotionally, physically. If you feel you are threatened or if someone is at your home or wants to cause you harm, you call the police. We will investigate it. We will support you. This is the right for every citizen. And if anyone tries to take that away from you, we please will intervene. Other agents will intervene. And even if the criminal code applies, those individuals will be dealt with. Another very important thing is the right to unreasonable search and seizure. This is very important because a lot of newcomers don't understand that. In Canada, any police officer or any government official can't just, without reason, decide to search you or detain you. Okay, there has to be a valid reason. So you have that right to pri privacy and have any search conducted with just cause it has to be validated. Why are you being detained? Why are you being searched? If, for example, uh, government officials or police or, or the RCMP show up at your home, they will usually require, they want to search your home, they will usually require a search warrant because that's how valuable your right to uh, privacy is. That just to name a few examples. Uh, arbitrary detention or imprisonment, right to not be detained or imprisoned without just cause after due process. In Canada, in Canadian laws, everyone, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. So if you're charged by any form of government, any police, any agency, there has to be a process through the courts in play. Once that process is complete, and if the courts decide you've, you've done something wrong or, or illegal, then, and only then, you may be imprisoned, or you may go to jail for a time or a fine or something of that nature. But there is a process, and you have the right to counsel, to defend yourself, and hear these charges or whatever these allegations are in court fully. Once that's exhausted, then, you know, whatever happens, happens from that point. Another very important thing is promptly informed of the reason for arrest or detention. No one, so right to be made aware almost literally immediately as to why you're being detained or arrested. No one in Canada can be arrested without it being, it has to be validated and being explained to them. If I'm arresting you, I have to explain why I'm arresting you. Make sure you're aware of that right. Uh, I'm not gonna just say, hey, you're under arrest and then you're gonna sit for hours, no. You're under arrest for assault. You're under arrest for this. Whatever the reason is, has to be explained to you and understood. Uh, these are very important parts, and I'm just going to focus on the last part, some more legal rights. Uh, it's very important, promptly inform of your right to legal counsel when arrested or delayed. It's a responsibility of any police officer or, or government official. If they arrest you, they have to inform you of that right call a lawyer or legal aid uh, upon arrest. So they have to explain why you've been arrested and then you have the right to contact any lawyer you wish or legal aid or whatever you prefer from that point. Those are musts that are required. And promptly informed of charge when arrested. So that's another thing. But as I explained, you, we will explain, you sh it will be explained to why you're being, whatever the charge or arrest is. And then if you are charged, that has to be brought forward right away and explained to you what your charge is. Uh, and you have the right to proceed to trial within a reasonable time. 18 months is the general rule. So whatever your, the allegation is or the offense is, it's usually 18 months the courts have to see, hear, your trial, your whole, um, you know, whatever it is, the charges has to be heard before the courts. If it is not, then you can argue your rights. That's where your lawyer can argue the Jordan rule where, you know, the charges may have to be withdrawn goes beyond that time for no real good reason. You have the right not to be forced to testify at your own trial. Uh, that's, that's a discussion you have with your lawyer. Sometimes it benefits you, sometimes it does not. So that's a discussion where you decide, but that's your choice if you want to testify at your own trial. And, and as I explained, everyone here is innocent. Anybody before the courts is innocent until proven guilty. So until the courts say you've been convicted for something, you will not have a record, you will not have anything there saying you were charged with this until you're convicted there. So 
So it's very important to know that you're innocent until this entire issue is proven in court. Uh, I think equality rights is another right. Everyone is equal. I think I've already explained that, that everyone in Canada, there is no this person or that group is better than this person or that. Everyone is equal. We get the same treatment, whether it's healthcare, whether it's uh, government service, it's all the same. We all have the, that equality and it's protected and guaranteed. Language rights. Canada has two official languages. They are English and French. So if you are at a government building, getting your passport, for example, or a license of some sort, driver's license, they will always be the option. There will be the option to have it in English or French uh, translation that will always be offered to you. That is your right as a language right. Anywhere in Canada, that will be there for you. So I, those are some important tips and some important, very important details. I, I ur urge you to print off the Charter of Rights. It's there, it's free. Read through it and just, just familiarize yourself with it. And if you have questions, we can follow up and have a discussion further about this. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope this is beneficial. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.